do you remember your first CNC project? Today we are going to take a look at Box very first design. In this video we will go through the main challenges we had when designing the sled, shine a light on the biggest mistakes we made on the prototype and test drive the latest model. Hi, I'm Davis. And if you've been watching this channel, you already know that I make a lot of designs that can be made on your CNC router and assembled just like a Lego toy. If you're new here and you would like to see more unique CNC projects, make sure you click that subscribe button. Believe it or not, this was actually the very first project I designed and made on the CNC. Since I had no prior experience in designing and I didn't know much about CNC in general, I had a lot of things to learn and the challenges that came with this project sometimes were overwhelming. From the day one the goal was to make something like this without using any glue, screws or nail. Only a sheet of plywood and CNC cut joints and that came with a set of challenges. The first and probably the hardest thing was to come up with a fully functional steering wheel. It took a couple of days to figure out a way to make the steering axis rotate smoothly. After an hour long brainstorming session my colleague came up with this simple bearing mechanism. I placed the bearing on the axis and it looked promising. Then I added two cover components to each section to prevent the bearing from sliding out of its slot. And it worked great. The next big challenge was to figure out the front ski. I knew that originally for sleds like this the front ski can align to snowy surface. Therefore I decided to use bearing mechanism similar to the way we did for the steering wheel. This simple component was designed to serve three purposes. First, covering the bearing so the ski is safely positioned, joining the front ski with the steering mechanism, preventing the front ski to fall too low to help the driver maintain the control at all times. When the steering wheel and the front ski was done, I had to come up with a solution for brakes. This wasn't too hard since we already had figured out the bearing mechanism. However, I still had to come up with an effective brake pad and a pedal that would be easily accessible when needed but wouldn't get in the way while cruising down the slope. I decided to use the wedge joint here just to be sure the brake pad doesn't fall off while riding. The last challenge was to come up with a good way to make the main skis. I knew there had to be a platform for rider to place his feet. This component would also prevent the sled from getting stuck in the deep snow since it creates a bigger surface to distribute the weight. Therefore the sled won't sink in too deep. I think the hardest part here was to figure out a way to attach the skis to the sled frame. After a long time of thinking I came up with this component. I made a weird tenon slash half lap joint here that would solve the issue of joining the ski to the frame. But the part here is also useful. It cuts into the snow a little bit and that significantly helps to handle the whole thing while riding. I decided to make two central ribs that would hold the steering wheel and the brakes in place. It can be easily attached to the back frame. Some final touches and the sled was completed. Wait, no! We still have to install rubber bands or extension springs for the brakes. The main idea is simple. The extension spring or the rubber band in this case gets the whole braking system back in its starting position so it's ready for the next time you need it. We have assembled the sled but I have to be honest with you. This wasn't the very first one we made. This one is. And not only this is the first plywood sled, but this is also my very first CNC project. Therefore, there are a lot of mistakes I made when designing this project. So the first obvious mistake is material choice. 
It's made of a 24mm plywood and therefore it's cumbersome and hard to pull up the hill, even for adults. I guess my logic of choosing material this thick was if it's thicker, it's also stronger. Well, as it turns out, it's also heavier. So the first lesson I learned was to know your material. Choosing material this thick wouldn't be that bad if I designed the whole thing using user parameters, but I didn't. That meant making the sled from, let's say, 9mm plywood would require redoing the whole design. Also, I learned that the plywood is rarely the same thickness as written on the product page. It can vary in thickness up to 1mm. It doesn't seem much, but you will definitely notice it when making CNC joints. The next mistake wasn't that bad, but it's worth pointing out. As you can see here, the wedge joint is kinda useless. If we inserted the wedge in the mortise, it won't pull the parts together. I had to make the distance slightly smaller than the material thickness, so the wedge has enough room when the parts are assembled. By the way, if you want to learn more about the wedge joint and four other simple joints that you can implement in your next CNC project, you might find this video useful. The wedge components were bad, but there were some parts that were impossible to make on your CNC. One of them was the bearing here. The distance here was too small for the dog bone corners. Therefore, this and some similar components required a little bit of chiseling. Which isn't bad, it just takes time. And if this part was designed properly, the CNC could clean the corners. So there would be no need for chiseling. Also, the axis for the brakes could be made out of one rectangular piece rather than two cross components. So these were the biggest mistakes I made when designing this project. Alright, enough of me talking, let's go out and test this sled. By the way, to increase the speed, I added a couple of pieces of garden watering pipe to the skis. The pipe covers the plywood edge here. Since the garden watering pipe is made from a plastic-like material, there will be less friction between the ski and the snow. That will result in more speed. The process of adding the pipe is quite simple. All we have to do is cut open the pipe, place it on the ski, pour a couple of holes and add some zip ties to prevent the watering pipe from falling off. When it's done, it's way easier to do something like this. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and also subscribe for more CNC related content. Stay creative and I see you next time.